Sorry, my dear. I've, I've had a simply dreadful day at the office. Oh, oh dreadful day. Pity they all came out a bit blurred. Still, it was his fault for moving, I suppose. <laughs> Dum, 
The gafongo, if you please, is a fish with singing knees and a tail that plays the Spanish clarionet. He has toes that whistle tunes and explode like toy balloons, hence his many, many visits to the vet. The gafongo, when he likes, swallows jam and rusty bikes, orange pips and treacle pudding boiled in glue. He loves chips with rusty nails and can swallow iron rails. That's why they cannot keep one in a zoo. But gafongo as a pet would cause panic and regret. People tried it and were nearly driven balmy. For once inside a house, he screams, I'm a Jewish mouse! Then he runs away and joins the Arab army. Hi, friend. Tonight I want to appeal to you on behalf of the Natural Preservation Society, a group dedicated to the protection of each of the species that inhabit this planet. Well, here, the Bengal tiger, one of nature's finest creatures, a Javanese rhino, in danger of extinction. And tonight I want to talk to you about a species that might disappear before even the tiger and the rhino, before we even realize there is a problem. The British aristocrat. <laughs> we took our camera team to a nobility sanctuary, Spongling Manor home of Lord Plumdick. A happy haven for aristocrats, all relations of Lord Plumdick. But sadly, he himself is unmarried and without male issue. This is part of our mission. We're in luck. The jewel coronet reveals that this is the head of the family himself, Lord Plumdick. The sight of our camera car has frightened him away. It was to be several hours before we were finally rewarded. Mouldering, butler to nobility for many years, and now our guide spotted a pride of peers at play. And here we see him attempting to lure the aristocrats. Our hearts were in our mouths as they emerged from hiding. They'd obviously got wind of the bait. Their capes fluttered with excitement at the scent of cucumber sandwich. And we're in luck. Lord Plumdick, Lady Anne, his sister, and her son, Peregrine, have taken the bait. They have come for tea. With the aid of our hidden camera, we were able to take some unique shots of our aristocrats eating. Our camera crew moved a little nearer. It was at this moment that some strange, primeval instinct told Lord Plumdick of our presence, that his territory was being threatened. <laughs> we had learned that it was essential to win the confidence of Lord Plumdick and his family. American aristologists had found the English aristocrat is invariably attracted by the dollar bill. This proved a sure way to bring our noble prey right up to the camera car. Having gained his lordship's confidence, we were ready for our prime objective. Meeting. Lord Plumdick must have an heir. There is no suitable mate in England. So we flew over a Russian countess. The authorities in Europe who kindly came to our assistance assured us that her credentials were fully authenticated. <laughs> to our surprise and disappointment, Lord Plumdick at first showed little interest in the great lady. But the resourceful moldering tempted him with genuine 18-carat Romanov jewelry. The ice was broken.
Motoring assures us that all is going well, but the aristocratic mating ritual is well underway. We returned nine months later. Success! A new aristocrat is born. Lord Plumdick proudly announces the birth of his heir to his faithful workers. The Duke is dead. Long live the Duke. Now, to keep this race alive, the natural preservation of Aristocrats Pond needs your money. Without this money, Lord Plumdick and many like him will simply disappear.